Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. In this one I'm going to be sharing with you guys my experience of purchasing a vacuum pump, some of the hassles that I went through and hopefully give you some advice on how to avoid this yourself and make sure that you have a vacuum pump that's actually going to last for quite a long time. This is not normally the content that I release on this channel. Normally I work on my old jet ski and I've recently been doing a lot of fiberglass work and trying to get into some carbon fiber stuff. I purchased this vacuum pump to do resin infusion or vacuum infusion on fiberglass and carbon fiber parts, but we're not going to get into that in this video. We're just going to talk about this pump. So let's get right into it. Instead of digging up old footage of me struggling with my vacuum pumps, I'll just very quickly share with you guys the story of what happened. I ordered a vacuum pump from Amazon, a half horsepower 5 CFM pump, and a pump showed up at my house. The box was damaged, the bracket on the bottom of the pump was damaged, and the fan was damaged. When I plugged it into the wall to start it, it uh, wouldn't turn, it was seized. I broke it loose with my hand, used it for a very short time, and it stopped pulling a vacuum. I assumed that it had been from the damage of it getting dropped, and so I packaged it up, sent it back, got another pump. The second pump wasn't damaged but it was shipped upside down and it had oil everywhere. I took the fan cover off, tried to turn it over, it was seized. I tried to turn the fan and the fan just spun on the shaft because it was very, very seized. I put a pair of pliers on the shaft and tried to turn it and it was very crunchy and grindy. Very, very not good. So I ordered a third vacuum pump. The first two were one horsepower units even though I ordered half horsepower units so they sent me a better pump than I actually ordered but both of them were bad. What you're about to see is the bad vacuum pump and why these pumps go bad. Just editing a video and I received another vacuum pump. This is my third one and it kind of doesn't even make sense at this point to record it because it kind of doesn't matter. Let's see if the box inside is open. Oh, I might have got a new one. I might have got a new one. <laughs> I don't think, unless it's been opened from the bottom, that's fresh tape. All right, I checked the bottom of this box and it hasn't been opened, so that's really good news. I don't know if I pointed it out in my other videos, but the other two vacuum pumps that I got were actually one horsepower, eight CFM. The one that I ordered was half horsepower, uh, five CFM which is still a lot better than most of them out there. Most of them are a quarter horsepower 3 CFM or 2.5 CFM. Anyway, they were sending bigger pumps than they were supposed to be. As you can see, this was upside down and there's a bunch of oil in here. Okay, this is apparently the one that they're supposed to send because it has two bottles of oil, two small bottles. The styrofoam is damaged here. Yeah, so there's oil all over everything, but it doesn't look like it's ever been used, so uh, this one will probably work for me. All right, before I plug it in or put any oil in it, let's see if the pump turns over. Hmm, not very easily. Okay, so this is the answer to whether or not this pump is any good. This one was seized up in the exact same way as the last two that I got. And so I decided to take it apart to find out why, because I'm sick of guessing at why, even though it's not my job to uh, know what's wrong. I am quite curious, so I took it apart 
In my last video, you might remember me wondering if they got shipped and got rusty inside because of being shipped overseas. I wonder if they're not seizing from like salt in the air or something. And it looks very much like that might be the answer to the question. Because if you look at the pump here, there is quite clearly rust on it. There is rust here and 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 these two valves on the top are very rusty. And I was wondering why the oil came out yellow. All right, so I took the outer piece off the outer vein and it looks okay. No rust inside of here, but it still won't turn over. It looks like there might be rust inside of that little port. There's definitely rust on the surface of that. So I'm gonna pull these two bolts and take the next part off. I got that piece off and now there's two more bolts here to get to the next uh, vein. Uh, there's rust here, rust here, rust here. So yeah, not looking good. I got that outer cover off and there is a little bit of rust here, but I'm pretty sure I can actually see what's causing the problem. You can see it's still will not turn over. This piece is not moving at all. So the junction or the connection between the actual motor and the pump itself or the vein is, uh, is seized up. The motor is moving a little bit, but this is not. So I'm gonna pull these bolts out, take this off and see yeah, see what I see in there. I'm suspecting that there's going to be rust buildup between the flat surface here and the back plate. There is the answer. That is some very dry looking crusty rust right there. I haven't done anything to it yet. I've just pulled the uh, pump off of the outside. So I'm gonna get a little pick or a screwdriver or something to scrape some of that away just to show you guys. Before I continue, I want to apologize for my shaky camera footage, but I'm currently editing video from the Hero 9 and the Hero 7, so I'm actually using my phone to shoot this. So if we zoom in here, you can see there's actually clumps of rust built up, or oh, wow. That is a lot of rust right there. The first one that I got actually probably wasn't very bad. If I would have taken it apart and cleaned it out, it might have been okay. But what is happening very quickly is this stuff, all this rust, if you run it, that all mixes in with the oil very quickly and then causes everything to wear out and kind of self-destruct, so not ideal very much not good i think i'm probably just going to put this back together and send it back this is the third pump that i've ordered from this company and it looks like this so at least we know why now obviously i'm upset i'm not going to be able to do my vacuum infusion or do any vacuum bagging this week and i was certainly hoping on doing that all right, before putting it back together, I figured it only made sense to try to pull this out and uh, look at the back side of this first rotor. You can see there's a bunch of rust on the back side of this rotor. I'm not sure if that's what you call it, vein rotor. Anyway, there's also a bunch of rust on the ceiling surface here. So yeah, I would just try to clean this up and use it, but very highly suspect that this would self-destruct after not too long because these surfaces are both pitted and I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to seal between these surfaces in order to create a, uh, a good vacuum or good air movement. So 
I decided to add a little commentary to this video just for those who are curious. The reason why this is a two-stage pump or they call it a two-stage pump or how the two-stage pump works is you have this larger vein here. You can see this is quite wide compared to this one. This one is the primary or the first uh, pump. This removes the majority of the pressure, gets it down to a fairly low level. They both work in tandem really, but this one, because it has a smaller volume, is able to remove um, more vacuum. I don't know how you would say that. It's able to remove that explanation turned into a complete disaster because I'm not really sure of the terminology. So what I'm gonna do is explain this to the best of my abilities using my hands and just explaining it with my own terms. Anyone who already understands this will probably be disgusted by this, but if you don't understand it, then this will give you the general idea of what's happening. So inside of the pump, you've got the two veins, the large one and the small one. The large one is able to move a larger volume of air, but it's not able to bring the pressure down all the way to what we'll call zero. So we have atmospheric pressure at 14.7 PSI, and we'll call zero an absolute vacuum. And I know this is not correct, but that's what we're going to call it. The large pump is able to bring the pressure down from atmospheric pressure down to say about here very, very quickly but it doesn't have the ability to remove the last of that air. So we need the small vein pump to actually get it all the way down to zero. And I know that it actually doesn't get it all the way down to zero, we're just calling it that. So why don't they just use the small one to start with? Well, that's because the small one can bring it all the way down to zero, but if you relied on it only, it would take forever to do it because it moves a smaller volume of air. As you guys can see, that pump looks pretty disgusting on the inside, so what I'm going to do is package it up and send it back. Even if your pump isn't so rusty on the inside that it's seized up, any little surface rust or contamination inside of the pump is going to cause premature wear because what's going to happen is that rust is going to mix in with the oil. That's then going to get pumped all throughout the pump, and yeah, it's just going to wear out the surfaces. It's going to lead to either a lowered vacuum or just a complete pump failure. So what I'm going to do, as I said, return this pump, I'm going to order another one, and before I put oil in it or do anything, I'm going to check to see if it turns over, and then I'm going to do a thorough video pulling the thing apart, inspecting it thoroughly, cleaning it out, reassembling it, and uh, testing it out. So that's going to be in another video. If you want to see that, be sure to uh, check it out. I'll try to post a link, but I'll probably forget. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Well, that's a good sign. The box is upside up, and it's not completely destroyed.